What's up guys, Michał Tech Test Tutorials. Today we are going to review Lenovo's Business Lie Ultrabook, the T450. As usual, I will install RAM and SSD. I will show you the process. We will inspect the build quality, components, features, and altogether the pros and cons, just to give you the answer whether you should buy this laptop or not. My configuration is rocking the slowest in the line i3-5010U. Uh, 2.1 gigahertz 14 nanometer 50 watt tdp broadwell chip it's great for low power consumption and general computing still it's a dual core chip so if you are looking for something that will do heavy cpu tasks you should get the one with 5300u or 5600u which are i5 or i7 processors both of these options are also available the graphic is powered by an on-chip Intel HD Graphic 5500 that should allow up to 3840 by 2160 at 60 Hz over mini display port on the external monitor of course. This laptop has 14 inch matte HD plus TN LED backlit panel with resolution 1600 x 900 the touch screen option is also available at the same resolution if you so desire. As always I've picked up the 4GB RAM and HDD drive model just to do the SSD and RAM upgrade my myself. Now let's take a look at the connectivity here. On the right side we've got the Kensington LAG VGA port, RJ45 Gigabit Ethernet, USB 3.0, SIM slot multi-card reader and headphone microphone jack combo. Moving to the left we've got smart card reader, USB 3.0, mini display port, vent, another USB 3.0 and power supply plug. For wireless we have Intel dual bound AC interface, Bluetooth 4.0, LTE or HSPA modem. This laptop features also 720p camera, dual speakers placed on the back cover, backlit keyboard and a fingerprint reader. In terms of dimension this laptop is 239mm wide, 232mm long and 21mm thick. Weight starts at 1.81 kg, that is less than 4 pounds. Depending what kind of battery and storage option you will choose. This is not ultra light but also not heavy, something in the middle you might say. Although I have to say from an ultra book I was expecting a little bit more. Or maybe I should say less if we are talking about weight. But there is a quite a unique feature that could justify the fact that this Ultrabook is a little bit on the heavier side, and that is power bridge technology, which is in simple words just dual battery. One is built inside 24 watt hours, and the second one removable, also the same size, although this will vary depending on which model you will get. The way it works, a um, laptop is running on the built-in battery and then, as the first will run out of juice, on the removable one. This will not only allow longer on battery time, but also will enable you to swap the battery without switching off the computer. Great! Now Lenovo promises battery time up to 19 hours with the 95 watt hour battery configuration. In my subjective real life test with 48 watt hour battery, I was able to have between 5 and 6 hours. The great thing although is if your workflow depends heavily on batteries, you can always purchase a spare one and switch it on the go. The bezel around the display is large. Somehow they were able to make this not look terrible. However, I still feel that this body was designed to house a bit bigger 1080p display. I really think that the display is the worst part of this product. Don't get me wrong, the 1600 by 900 HD Plus display was cool a few years ago, but right now, at this price point, I think we deserve more. 
But the resolution is not the biggest problem with this display. Colors are dull. Viewing angles are average, even for TN panels. And brightness won't allow you to work outside at all. Even when I was trying to see something in a shade, I had a hard time to read the text. I might be a bit spoiled by the IPS displays, but this display was really disappointing for me. With that being said, if you will work only at your desk with spreadsheet and document, you should be fine. Another thing I wasn't impressed with were speakers. Again, this is not a multimedia gaming device, but I think we could at least be expecting something decent. The speakers are producing very flat sound without bass, and to make things even worse they are firing downwards. If you are using this computer at your desk it's ok -ish. but if you will try to listen something while holding this on your lap, your knees will block the sound completely. In my T430i the speakers were very similar but placed on the both sides of the keyboard and the sound was way better. I guess this should be fixed in the next model. Ok, enough complaining. There are a few pros too. I love the way how silent this laptop is. This is not only thanks to the low TDP Bradwell chip. The guys at Lenovo always knew how to design a nice cooler and historically they have always done a good job, so no problem there. Silent operations are always appreciated. It would be cool to have a truly passive cooler, but I guess we need to wait a bit for that too. Most of the time the fan is running very slow and they have used a fancy blade technology to make it quiet. So really no problem there. Also the keyboard is nice. I like the layout, it's good that they didn't shrink the up and down arrow keys, which is sadly very common these days. You can also change the intense of backlight, but the famous lamp over the keyboard is gone and this time it looks that it's gone for good. This laptop is also very friendly for anyone who would like to upgrade it all by himself. To remove the bottom cover you will need a Philips screwdriver and pick or business credit card. After unscrewing 7 screws there will be a little bit of prying but nothing too intense, don't be worried. After 3 or 4 minutes you will be able to access most of the components. Installation of RAM and SSD is easy. The way I have cloned the HDD to SSD was very simple. I have swapped the drives and then connected the old uh, HDD via USB. Just, to, just make sure that your cloning software supports USB 3.0, since there are no 2.0 ports there. I'm very happy to report that Acronis 3 Image 2016, I was able to clone the drive under 8 minutes. Very easy and straightforward process. If you don't know how to do that, check out my HDD to SSD cloning video. I will link, leave a link down in the comment section just below that like button. Finally, do I recommend this laptop? Well, at this moment there already is a T460. The new model is rocking a 1080 IPS display that should be way better than this 5 or 6 years old HD+. With that being said, I haven't tested the new one yet. I will do that as soon as I will get one, so get subscribed if you would like to see that video. I guess it all comes down to the price. If you will find a good deal on this laptop and you don't care that much about color reproduction and lower resolution, I think you could consider. Personally, I think that if someone is buying an $800 or $900 laptop in 2016, he should get at least a decent full HD panel. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Remember to support the channel by hitting that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and see you next time. Bye!